and we just think, ah, there's going to be trouble. The world had trouble always, right? But this is going to be a different kind of trouble. Very, very different. Yeah, and it's going to be very, very, very great, right? So that is why we have to be anchored in God's word. We have to make sure that God is, that Jesus Christ is our Lord and our Savior, 100%. Otherwise, why would you stand? That's right, why would you? It's not only going to be national, natural disasters and these sorts of things, but then it's also going to be angels in the form of apostles. Yes, yes. Saying they've come down and say, look, this is how it is. Sunday is the day. These people are disregarding it. Please come back. It'll be all nice at first. So right, right. Th that'll put, if you're not grounded in what it actually says, then why would you stick with the Saturday? Mm. You've, got, you've got heavenly beings, you've got national disasters, people are blaming you mm. because they're saying, well, you're causing this because it's God's displeasure. Yeah, you're still keeping the Sabbath. Um, and yeah. if you can't stand on that, we haven't got enough of the word, enough oil in your land, so to speak. You yeah, right, right. Why do we stay? Otherwise, yeah. we have the grounding. I mean, we've seen it in history. That is true. Yeah, it's like a Jordan has to Yeah, right, right. You, you are blamed for the natural disasters. For natural disasters, oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Because of you, you, you're not uniting. You know? we, we were trying to unite the world. But because you're not going to unite us, this is what happens. Mm. Mm. And everything now is being put into place. Ellen White says, while men are sleeping, right? All of these plans and things are already put into place here. Yeah. And you know, so, we have to realize with all the time, the 120 years that Noah was Noah. building the ark, mm -hmm. and all the people that helped him there, only the protection of God oh. kept them from being killed by the people living around them. And the di dinosaurs that they'd invented too, they would have stick them on mm. them. And, uh, you know. <coughs> They can, but they can only mock them and, and tempt them there. Mm. Mm. So Revelation's final conflict, conflict is going to be about worship, about the fourth commandment. So we need to know what we believe and why we believe it, right? If somebody comes to you um, asking you why you keep the Sabbath, Sabbath has been done away with, how are we going to answer them? How are we going to point them out to God's word? What text are we going to show them? Right? To say, no, that is not true, my brother or my sister. Right? Show me so, the rock that he wrote. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> the yeah. first day in the rock there. I wanted to see it. So, going to Monday's part, the coming crisis. Okay. So, the mark of the beast prophecy, right? In Revelation 13, tells us about the fiercest and very worst stage of Satan's war against God. Ever since Jesus died on the cross, the enemy has known he was defeated, but he is determined to take as many as possible down with him. And his first strategy in this campaign is deception. Deception. The one video that I watch, it's uh, uh, this one gentleman, he was an Adventist, he attended Adventist schools, middle school, high school, at uh, university. His dad is a pastor for 40 years. But he says, I became, he says, so his question, he left the Adventist church, now he makes videos exclusively against the Seventh-day Adventist church. And he says, why did I leave the Adventist church? And his statement right there is, because I became a Christian. <laughs> so the question to him is, why do you mean you became a Christian? He says, no, the Ad I, I left the Adventist church because I became a Christian. I realized that the first day of the week is the real Sabbath. He went through the whole, through all the schools, Adventist schools, university. His dad is a pastor for 40 years already, seven Adventist pastor. But he makes, and he knows his story. He talks about Alan White, he brings up things, and he says, look at this. Yes, she's contradicting herself. Yes, she's contradicting herself. Yes, she plagiarized. Then he's got all the other information from the other writers and everything, right? 
So I was thinking, you know, people like that, how do we answer them? You know, they come, they, they've done their homework. And if they want, if they come and say, but look at this, look at that, look at that, how are we going to answer them? We need to know what we believe, right? And why we believe it. And that is part of the coming crisis. Part of the coming crisis. So, well, you know, the Lord said, don't worry about when they drag you into court or something, don't worry about what you have to say. That's right. That's right. Just know the story, the true story. True story, yeah. And then God will give you the words to speak. To speak. Season. But in order for God to give us the words to speak, we need to be in His Word. Yeah. Right? Yeah, we need words. to be here. Uh, we cannot in just be Adventists at the Chen Church every day, but we never open our Bibles ever. And say home. something about it. I, I've talked with them. I was a missionary. I've talked and I've met them and fought with them. <laughs> uh, one of the verses that they got from the Bible, I, I was uh, trying to think about it, say they were given power. They said, blow out the trumpet, like declare the sin of my people. Mm -hmm. That's they said that they, we, they, we should declare the sin of the people. So I studied logic about it a little and I said, if uh, we are the people, God's people, and we are sinning, and you are the just the declarer, then who is God's people? Mm -hmm. uh, that, that our conversation will stop right there yeah. because they were using a lot of analogies that this is God's people, and this is the pastor, they are pulling this because of our tithes and everything. Yeah, yeah, right, so, right. right. Our, my question was that who is God's people in the, in the verse who say, declare, shall the sin of my people? Who, who is God's people? God's people, right, right. The one who is sinning. And what is your what is your role? True, yeah, yeah. You, you're, you're just a declarer. Though I would rather be in God's people sinning rather than the one that is declaring. I don't yes. know what, what is your role, but I, I just want to be here. Mm -hmm. And our conversations right there. Because it was just simple logic. But... That's right, that's right, yeah. Because a lot of the, the other verse that they like to use also is Colossians 2. Mm -hmm. Right, this is 5 and 6, or 4, 5 and 6, yeah. And then, the, the, what the, the wrong thing about them is, they're not preaching the gospel for the good news. They're preaching about the sin of, of the church. Yes, that's right. So if you're, right. Really, if you're really into the Bible, you have to preach what is the Bible, what the Bible the says. about Jesus, the love not, of God. Not the sin of the oh. pastor, not the sin of the Seventh-day Adventist. <laughs> no, you don't have to do that. Yeah, right, Preach right. the good news, not the bad news. That's right. So, deception, right? The coming crisis. We're going to come to the coming crisis because Satan is going to deceive the whole world, right? And he's going to resort to force, yeah. to force people to worship God on Satan's day, mm -hmm. right? Not God's holy Sabbath day. So, religious persecution is not new. It has been around ever since Cain killed Abel for obeying God's command. We know that Cain killed Abel and it was over worship. Over worship. And the same thing is going to happen again. And Jesus said it would happen even among believers. Right? Even amongst believers. So let's read John 16 verse 2. And if somebody can turn to Matthew 10 verse 22. John 16 verse 2. Matthew 10, sorry, 10. And then Matthew 10, verse 22. John 16, verse 2. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, the time is coming when anyone who kills you will think they are offering a service to God. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. And Matthew 10, verse 22. Let's just modernize that one word, synagogue. Churches. Mm -hmm. For us today. Churches. That's right. That's right. Um, 10, 2, 10, 22. So, and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endures to the end shall be saved. Amen. Amen. Right. So, they shall put you out of the synagogues, right? Out of the churches, right? That whoever will kill you will think that he's doing God is service, right? And what you read now to so that is the coming crisis, right? So <clears throat> persecution, and we know that's going to happen very, very soon. They're going to blame the people who are not keeping the first day, the Sunday holy. 
They're going to blame them for everything that is happening in the world. Everything that is happening. All the disasters, we know that um, <clears throat> Satan is going to cause many disasters on the earth. God is going to allow him to cause many disasters. And who is going to get the blame? All of those who will not heed the command to worship God on the first day of the week. Yeah, Michael? This, this <clears throat> climate change, which is our big boo-boo, we know that it is Satan that's causing, and that's moving the <clears throat> snow and the rain to the different places of the Lord, mm. of the world, and like <clears throat> Arabia. That's just, right. Just flooding them out. Mm. You know, their expensive cars are Floating in, in the water. Water, that's mm. right. Not a natural happening. Yeah, there are many, many natural disasters that's going to happen at all. And they're going to see and they're going to push it. Climate change, climate change. We need that. We need to give the earth a rest. The earth needs a day of rest. And what day will that be? We'll be on a Sunday. We're going to say Sunday, right? So <coughs> Maybe we shouldn't be calling it natural disasters. We should be calling it unnatural disasters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. And it starts also here. Um, the prophecy indicates that the persecution will start with economic sanctions, right? No one can buy or sell. And already they are implementing the digital currencies, right? In 50 countries now, 52 countries, lately, I don't know if you read the news, uh, Norway and Cambodia, this year now, also went over to digital currencies. And that is how they're going to cut you off with the uh, digital currencies, right? Because they will control everything. Because Kenya started now the 1st of January, the very first day of January. So everything is linked. Your birth certificate, your passport numbers, your bank account numbers, your driver's licenses, even your hospital records. Everything is on one thing. On one thing. And that is where it says we won't be able to buy or sell. We always wondered, I was telling you, I don't know if I told you, but I always thought when I was much younger, you know the best way, the only way to get over this buy or sell is to take your money and bury it in your backyard, <laughs> right? And then you will always have money. Not always have money, but when others don't have here, but here they come up with digital currency, yeah. right where, then they'll make it illegal. You owe nothing and you'll be happy. Use money. It will that be illegal to do that. In that's fact, right. even to exchange services, they'll make that illegal. Legal. Yeah. yeah. I remember this one statement just before, Brother Alvin, that Alan White says people are going to take their money and throw it into the streets because they're going to be worthless. Worthless, all your money that you had at home is going to be worthless because everything is going to be digital. You cannot go with hard cash to any shop. They're not going to accept that. Mm. Only digital currency. Mm. Um, the digital IDs in connection with that. That's right, mm. that's right. Australia started it uh, a month ago. Okay, so okay. So they brought in digital IDs. And, um, the more countries that have that in tandem with these CBDCs. Right, right. That gives them unprecedented control. I think. If you look back at um, the COVID era and you forget about the, the virus and all that stuff, and all the injections or whatever, or not, but look at how we had a, a taste of society control around the world. Oh, right, a right. taste of what you can do, what you can't can do, do, based on whether you've done this or you haven't. Right, right. So a control mechanism, I think that was a really clever test run for something they can enforce in a much grander oh. scale with that when they have digital currencies, digital IDs. I mean, we see beyond that, like not just the right, uh, right vaccine side of things. Right. Yeah, we have we certainly have some. Um, we can see the fruit ri the fruit ripening. Yes, the yes. Time is just that's right. Exciting right. times right. are coming. Yeah, mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exciting is one word for yeah. it. <laughs> because I mean, with the digital <laughs> currency, you live in Exciting yeah. You won't be able to travel anywhere. They cut you off. That is it. Yeah, you cannot travel. I think we are we are one market crash away 
from them introducing CBDCs. Yes. And uh, when your money is worthless and the markets are crashing, everybody's in fear and people will themselves be calling for them to bring in the solution. And their solution will be the CBDC. One thing that's really interesting that's just happened, um, one of the reasons for America's prosperity is the petrodollar, mm -hmm. right? Saudi Arabia has been a huge part of that. And they've just said they no longer wish to use the American dollar. Yeah, right, they've right. Just stopped. Yeah. And that's, that's massive. They're one of the major suppliers. So it's just another mm. kink in the chain and then this other BRICS um, yeah, alliance right, right. with you know, India, Russia, China, and so on. We've got this sort of polarization of two major groups, um, financially speaking, yeah. and it's, it's just destabilizing the dollar it hasn't, it hasn't had the impact yet, yet, the, not the, yet, yet, but as it starts to come into play, it could be one of the things that helps to bring about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Right, I think we're right at the start of the, the what they call the Great Reset. The Great Reset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right, yeah. right. All right. So, so we know that um, the the central conflict will be between good and evil will be over worship. Who are we going to worship? When are we going to worship, right? The beast uses deception and when that fails, you will use force and coercion. Right, and identifying the beast. Who is the beast? Okay, Revelation 13. It's, if somebody can read that for us, please. Revelation 13, verses 1 and 2. Revelation 13, verses 1 and 2. I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Oh, verse 2. Uh, the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So we know who the beast is, right? We know who the dragon is. Who's the dragon? The dragon is Satan, right? And we know who the beast is. The beast is the paper power, right? So, um, and where does this beast rise from? Right? It says, and they stood upon the sand of the sea, right? Sea represents people, nations, right? Kingdoms. That's what the sea represents in prophecy, right? In prophecy. And so the book of Revelation identifies the dragon primarily as Satan. Because Revelation 12, verse 3 to 5 says, The dragon attempted to destroy as soon as it was born the male child. Right? We know that um, the decree went forth all children two years and younger need to be killed. That is when Jesus was born. Right? Uh, who was later caught up to God and is thrown. It was the devil working through pagan Rome who tried to destroy Christ. So the beast. Okay. In the, <laughs> the, 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 the verse two is like the is like the the conglomeration of old Daniel chapter uh, chapter eight. Like yeah. there is this image of the lion. Yeah, right. The leopard. The leopard. Yeah, right. What was that? What country was it? The lion. Babylon? The Babylon. Uh, yeah, the line is Babylon, that's and right. You have the foot of a bear, that is the Persian. 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 We have this mouth, and we have the other one. Is. So all of, these, all of these countries that are coming all together in one, in one image, yeah, yeah. all of the power, all of the characteristic of Daniel, all the image of Daniel is in this. It's coming together. In this one. Right, right. <clears throat> An easy way to also recognize who or when an organization is controlled by more by one side or the other. Christ is always for, is he about forcing anyone? Did Christ behave like that when he was on earth? Never. He never, never. did, right? Never. Always about options. Oh. He did say, follow me. Me, yeah, that's right. But he would always knock on the door. He never came yeah, right. with a you know a sledgehammer to get in. And the perfect example is the rich running ruler. He didn't Which force him to follow him. Yeah. He didn't force him to, but as you just said that word just before, 
you'll recognize it by current ownership. Mm. Whenever someone or an organization, doesn't matter who, they're trying to force you to take a certain action, then their motivations are coming from an inspiration. Yeah, right, right. Right, and the, the cowardly version of that is the passive. Mm. The one who will not support you. Right, But will right. let you reap the consequences yourself. So that's, that's true. That's another discussion. But yes, the, yeah. the <laughs> passive side of that, where they just won't support the independence of choice. Mm. Brother Lin was talking about the, the beasts, the leopard, the bear, and the lion, yeah. and saying yeah. it's in, in Daniel. But if you look at the order, it's opposite. Mm. It's because yeah. Daniel is looking at it in the future. The future it's going right. to happen. But uh, John now is looking back at history. And uh, the order, now he starts with a leopard. Yeah. And he says the leopard and the bear and the lion. But my point is, uh, this beast has all the characteristics of all those so nations. Uh, yeah, right, right, right. Babylon is what? Babylon is pagan worship. Yeah, ba ba Babylon, yeah, Babylon yeah. sorry, pagan worship, the dragon, the beast, and Middle false Prussia. prophets. Yeah. Middle Prussia, all of this. That's so right. all of the characteristics of these nations in Daniel chapter 8, I think, it's all you know, amalgamated in this mm. one beast, and then he has yeah, everything. Right. So right. this is the beast. Yeah. I think uh, Pastor has Pastor, like, yeah. Yeah. He said uh, chapter Daniel 8, but Sorry. 7. <laughs> 7. 7. 7. Okay. So, Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, so, yeah, we know that um, Babylon is the dragon, the beast, and the false prophets. So right. that's, that's the identifying <laughs> The, our lesson is that's the identifying mm. mark of the beast. Of, we have uh, all of the characteristic of those nations. And it says in the dragon gave him his power. The dragon right. gave the Satan. beast the power. Yeah, so Satan gave uh, people Rome their power. Brother John, can I give you one nugget? We're just almost... Oh yeah, right. right here. Uh, I knew a lady that was asked by the GC to write the quarterly for the world church <coughs> and on Song of Song. So she did it. I've seen it. <laughs> and I had a copy of it, actually. And uh, when the brethren at the GC read it, they were distressed because it was about, she wrote it about 1888. And remember what Sister White said. In 1901, the door was closed and bolted to the whole Holy Spirit. And when that happened, Sister White said, Christ's disappointment was beyond expression. That was one of the first things that I ever knew, that Jesus doesn't know the day and the hour. See? Mm. Uh, only the Father. And he's mm. told us clearly, not the Holy Spirit, not the God the Word, only the Father. And so Christ, in 1888, Christ thought he, mm. within about four years after 1888, he would be finishing the great controversy here. Mm. And the millennium would be in heaven. Mm. Right? And it didn't happen. <clears throat> so it broke his heart. So if you look at that situation and put it in Song of Solomon, when the groom came hunting for the bride and she wouldn't meet him. Mm. Wow. And then you just it just absolutely fits. But they just said, whoops, sorry. <laughs> the leaders? Oh no, 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 no. No. When, and that was the end of that. They both mm. had somebody else <clears throat> and, they, and yeah, just quickly it says uh, the sea beast of Revelation is an apostate religious power that rises out of Rome and becomes a worldwide system of worship. The beast is not a person. It is a religious organization that has substituted the truth of God's word for human decrees. And in Wednesday's part, it says here, those who honor the Bible Sabbath will be denounced as enemies of law and order as breaking down the moral restraints of society, causing anarchy and corruption, and calling down the judgments of God upon the earth, they will be accused of disaffection toward the government. 
ministers who deny the obligation of the divine law will present from the pulpit the duty of yielding obedience to the civil authorities as ordained of God. In legislative halls and courts of justice, commandment keepers will be misrepresented and condemned. And here it says that um, the um, remnant of God will be accused of everything that's happening in the world, all the disasters, right? And then, and even the minister is going to say from the pulpit, you know, let's follow God. The Bible says, um, give rent down to Caesar what he seizes, right? So we need to follow the government. If the government says worship on the first day, we need to worship on the first day. That is what's going to be preached from the pulpits, right? But here, and it says, in a legislative halls and courts of justice, commandment keepers will be misrepresented, and then they will be condemned. So now we know identifying the mark of the beast, it is a religious organization that is substituted. Yeah, God's no, commandments. I just want to say, uh, well, we, we Seventh-day Adventists, we have to be careful with two extremes when we're studying about this, because the other extreme is like, when people hear this, they were going to go to the mountain and build their houses there and mm -hmm. do not send their children to school because it's coming. The other extreme is like when people hear that, oh, I just want to be a Seventh-day Adventist because I don't want to be with the, the, the beast. You're right, you're right. But they're not taking it seriously. They're, they're a lot, when, you say, when you hear about the news, like, oh, there's a preaching in the mountain and then thousands are baptized because of the prophetic mm. preaching. Yeah. But there is no deeper connection with yeah, Christ. That's right, why right. our lesson study is so good. The, the, I like the, the memory verse we have today. Sanctify them by thy word. By thy words. Your word is true. true. So yeah. when you hear about the bad news, the, the, the commotions about the United Nations, it's like, ah, like this, like this, like that. Oh. We're just going to run away and stop our jobs. But we have to be oh. careful of that. Right. This is not like this. We have to go on. And we have to hold on to God's truth. Yes, yes, yes. Can I have one thing to that? Sure, sure. And that's where, I mean, personally, I think the focus is wrong. Right. Right. Because it's, I, yes, we've been told to get out of the cities where we can. We've been told to do all these mm -hmm. things. That's true. But if, you're, if your focus is just saving yourself, mm. then you don't have Christ's character in this right. church. What about those that are lost? Is it just you? You just want to save yeah. your own behind? Right, but at the end of the day, if you but she says you go out, you live in the country, but you must stay. Yeah, but you work in the city. In the city. But, but yeah. the focus, like, still, yeah. the emphasis there. Yeah, the focus. The focus I understand exactly is exactly what you're saying. Yeah, you know, protect myself. Well, in right. sure, we all have self-preservation as yeah. part of us. But where is your where is your Christ-like yeah. manner in that in that way? Yeah, because God wants us to go to get out of the cities. Because if you read if you read uh, the Great Controversy, it says. People will come into your homes mm. and take your possessions by force. They will take all your food, whatever you have, but and there's nothing you can do. Mm. You will have nothing, right? So, and she says the the plagues and the disasters will be the worst in the cities. Mm. God's people will still be somewhat protected out in the countryside. Right there, you can grow your food, you can grow whatever you need to eat in that. Um, you can um, survive longer, but eventually, eventually it will get to you. Right then, that is when God's people have to flee. Ellen White says, to the mountains, to the deep forest, to the holes in the ground. That's exactly, that's the exact words, what she says. Yeah. So, I have a question. So, exactly when do we have to flee? Because right now, I don't think now is the time. Oh, have, sorry. So we do have to live our own life, right? We do have to live our daily life. Yes, but, yes. But, but exactly when would be the time? And could it be yeah, we, we need to. Yeah. We need to pray about that. And Alan White says, we need to watch the times. And then when the times are like now, these are all mornings for us about. You know, they're already talking about changing the day from Sunday to, from Sabbath to Sunday. They're going to make it a law. Now with digital currencies are coming, you're going to be cut off. So what is your options? We don't have many options, really. And so she admonishes us, we need to watch the times. And then we will know the time to move out of the 
But she also said not everybody will have that privilege to move to the countryside because not everybody has got the money to do that. But once the digital currency they enforced that, all your money, whether you have a hundred dollars in the bank or a hundred million dollars in the bank, you're gonna have own nothing. It's gonna be cut off. You all that money that you there's there's absolutely nothing that you can do with it. So now while you have the money, it is good to buy, to purchase while you have whatever you have, right? If you can, you can buy, you can go out of the cities because of the influence of also and what is going to happen in the cities. She says it's going to be terrible. We cannot imagine it. What is going to happen? So it's better if you, now that you have the means, before that digital currency comes in and they say everybody's going to be on this system, mm. then you won't be able to do anything with your money because they're going to determine you can only have, example, $100 a day, $300 for the week. Mm. I've read some reports where they said this is what they propose to do. Really? You cannot buy then a piece of land with $300 or $500 a, day, a week. Impossible, impossible. Now when you have the means, but we need to watch the times. We don't need to panic, like you said. We must not be selfish and say, I'm gonna set myself up and you know, I'm gonna be cozy there. You others are gonna be in big trouble soon. But even what, like David Gates, do you know David Gates, Pastor David Gates? David Lee Gates. Yeah, he's a very good missionary missionary pilot too, they have, they already living out in I think in Peru, where they live, but they go every Sabbath, they go into the cities, they have Sabbath school, they have church and everything, but they always go back to where they bought land and that. Already. This is why the, the cities must be weak for That's right. But not by living in. That's right. Yeah. So the early Christians also had in Jerusalem when Rome attacked, there was a period for them when they uh, stopped attacking and there was a bit of a they that's right, back. That's right. And that was the sign for the, Christ, the early Christians to get out of Jerusalem. And history tells us they were the only ones that were That's right. They were the Libyans perished in, in Jerusalem. Yeah. That was so, the last. Yeah. Yeah. Those that fled, they weren't taking houses and cars and stuff. No, but they, they, they just fled. They just fled. They were doing nothing. So right. those that do wait for the very end will leave with nothing. Well, anyway, Brother Ren, Lyndon preached a very good sermon connected to this persecution uh, last night. Do not fear. Yes. Um, That's right. You don't have to fear. All right, thank you so much for your contributions and welcome. Thank you, <coughs> family. Yeah. Can you introduce yourselves quickly before we pray? Uh, CJ Saw, Dana Saw, Victor Saw, Kaylee Saw, we are visiting from LA. Uh, okay, you visiting Korea? Uh, visiting Korea, yeah. yes. Family. Our family. Oh, family. Okay, okay, welcome and I hope you have a wonderful stay here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's pray together. Loving Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for speaking to us this week through your word, through the lesson study, Lord. And as we have studied this lesson about the end times, Father, I pray that first and foremost, that we will search our hearts, Lord, to make sure that we have a solid relationship with you, Lord. And I pray that as we have that relationship with you every day, that our faith and our hope in you will grow stronger and stronger and that we will not only keep your word to ourselves but whoever we meet father that they will see christ in us and through us and also through the spoken word that we can introduce them to christ and we can introduce them to your great love for them and your very soon coming Amen. i also pray that as we will go into the next part of our worship our the sabbath school father i pray that you will prepare our hearts and our minds once again for the next program lord and may we receive the blessing from it that you have in store for us and i pray lord also that um, we will determine in our hearts that we will keep your sabbath day holy thank you for your great love for us and thank you 
for your blessings. We ask all these blessings in the wonderful and loving name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.